so great to see so many people who knew and worked with and loved Brian come here this evening to once again meet with Brian, that great influence who was such a, a, a commanding presence in his 13 years at Schumacher College. Brian really wanted to put together these two aspects of our minds really, one the scientific, the rational aspect. No, he was a mathematician, so it was a very <coughs> rigorous mathematical aspect. But like me, he felt there was something missing in science. Something to do with, I used to hate to use this word because it's not respected in mainstream culture, certainly not in science, but something to do with soul. Something soulful. He was after something soulful, and so was I. I had the great privilege and honor of being able to edit Brian's last book with him, and then, of course, producing, helping to produce this book. Brian's last book was called Nature's Dew, and my delight when the manuscript arrived on my desk in Edinburgh could not be described, because I knew of Brian, I'd met him years before. I, like everyone else, I fell in love with him immediately. Uh, I was totally uh, bowled over by his charisma. We had a fantastic conversation the first time we met about his theory of emergence of, of form, which has always remained with me. Brian invited a lot of his unusual friends to come and teach on the master's degree. And we had, they're all extremely brilliant people. Henry Bortoff, the philosopher. And then we had Margaret Colquhoun, who was teaching Goethean science, how we can connect with natural phenomena like plants intuitively, without really thinking about them, just letting them communicate through us and to us. Um, and then we had, uh, we had James Lovelock coming to talk about Gaia theory. So we had an incredible mixture of people coming to coalesce and explore how we could bring together these two ways of knowing, our intuitive knowing with our rational knowing. And that's what we're still doing to this day in, in, at uh, Schumacher College in holistic science. One of the things that Brian is famous for is something called a, a Goodwin oscillator. This system, a Goodwin oscillator, is where you have something, you have a gene that uh, produces a pro an RNA and produces a protein which turns off, um, deactivates that, the code of the gene so the protein can't produce itself anymore. So it produces a kind of paradoxical situation that something um, produces a protein which turns itself off so it can't produce the protein anymore. So it stops turning itself off, so it turns itself on so it can produce the protein again. So that turns itself off. And so this thing can go round and round and round like this. And, and Brian was suggesting that many processes in biology use this um, sort of paradoxical mechanism to set up oscillation. He was intelligent. I had huge respect for his intelligence. And when you deal as an editor with, with an author, you have to have that respect, otherwise the relationship goes all wrong. His, just his way of speaking, his, his sense of relaxation, his clarity was so clear. And the way he engaged with the audience, you know, he, he felt this is no ordinary academic. This is someone who loves to communicate, who loves to share ideas. The mark of a great mentor, it's not someone who teaches you uh, how to do science, it's someone who teaches you how to live. And I think that's really what, what, what Brian did. What Brian really believed in, in his work and in his relations to people, uh, was potential. I think it's really appropriate that um, Jamie is going to give his presentation. When I arrived at the college, I was introduced to, the, to, to Brian's work, and just, just on even holding his book, it, I got one of those moments, I don't know, you pro can probably relate, when you've had lots of ideas, you've thought about something, you've felt something, and then someone comes and offers you a book, and it seems that someone's dedicated their whole life to it. You only need to define a very simple equation like this, and get the answer to become the question, and the answer to become the question, and the answer to become the question, just like the Goodwin Oscillator, to reveal a pattern that has infinite complexity. So I've continued this, this work, this play, I should say, um, at looking at fractals into the 21st century by using computers to discover hidden geometries within the chaos of mathematics. But the, the thing here is to not get lost in, in the static images because we're talking about a dynamic universe. Brian really spoke of a very living, a living 
transforming, metamorphosing world where everything was changing. And so by making these mathematical equations time dependent, all of a sudden they come to life. And they start to exhibit patterns that aren't like triangles, circles or squares. There seems to be a real organic intelligence hidden within the very basics of, of number itself. I didn't create these in the sense because they were already there. These were already within the blueprint of however this reality is, is laid out. The way we see a spiral in a galaxy and can reflect upon that in the snail that's in our garden, there's a self-referencing that seems to be inherent in the world that we live in. And that self-referencing is really related to the, to the, you know, to the Goodwin oscillator, to that paradoxical loop. This is really a, a marriage of, of the whole and the part that we, we're dealing with in the Schumacher College and in holistic science, and that, and that Brian was bringing biology to grips with, to look back at the whole organism, rather than getting lost in the genes, to getting lost in the parts. He was not only at Schumacher, in that sort of living spirit of exploration, that characterizes the college and the courses. But he was always eager and always slightly mischievous and wanting to sort of prod the mainstream as he saw it. He was, for me, an innately good person. One sensed that vibration from him. He was, uh, he was zany. Brian was talking about the heart and suddenly he clutched his heart he said, oh, it's my heart. And everybody laughed because they thought he was, <laughs> they thought he was just sort of acting out, you know, what he was showing about an unhealthy heart just having a regular beat. And then he said, no, I think it's serious. And he went to lie down and everyone thought. Oh. A great uh, scientist, uh, philosopher, and a uh, really crazy person in a very good way. We used to visit him in the hospital, you know, and he was still coming out of that. It was quite extraordinary. He was in his dressing gown, very thin. And he'd say to me, ah, oh, Stefan, welcome to the Ritz. He really thought it was the Ritz Hotel. <laughs> he'd say, waiter, waiter. He had everything. He had everything. And yet he had that humility, which enabled us to have a proper dialogue about the text and bring it to light. So when he came out of that operation, I noticed much more love, much more warmth towards me, towards everybody else. Not that he wasn't warm before, but he had a sort of slight distance, you know, that sort of academic distance that I felt. After that, that distance had disappeared. I feel optimistic about Brian's vision for biology and also for the way that we can use and experience his paradigm for moving forwards in this world. He said, grasping the nature of life is like catching a whirling eddy in a stream. The moment you have it in your hands, it disappears and leaves you with the matter, but not the form. I'd seen the dedication of the book, and he dedicated the book to the Crystal River, whose course has changed my life. I said, Brian, I've looked in every atlas I can find. <laughs> I have searched the internet. There is no Crystal River. And then, of course, I wasn't aware of recent changes in his personal life, um, which had really genuinely changed the course of it. All I know is that uh, I think to use Henry Bortoff's wonderful image, I think the two of them were on this river looking upstream. And although the river was bearing them to the great ocean, they were looking back together to the source of all things. He was a truly great person. He's still alive today. He's still with us now. He's inspiring us in this very moment in holistic science, and he will continue to inspire us. And I hope that one day, because of the work we're doing here, that science itself and society itself will realize that Brian Goodwin was truly one of the great scientists of our time.